architectural studio, and this country is a big architectural studio. It feels that way. Uh, also, um, I'm very happy that uh, one of the visitors here uh, is uh, Fred Wagemans because he has uh, incited me to try to have the Vata Ooster uh, for harvesting uh, water plants in the canals to make maybe methane gas or fuel. And um, it is true that here in Hofdorf they do that, uh, at least something like that. They do collect um, the plants with this kind of a machine. They then dump the plants, uh, when they dig them up out of the water, as you see, and then they, uh, they dump the plants onto the banks of the canal so that they, they can go back into the canal, <laughs> meaning nothing gets done. <laughs> uh, after that, I, <laughs> I made a remark to Martin van der Heijen, the curator of the show. I, I, I used to think I was smart, now I realize I'm just not stupid because I'm just not stupid because this is so stupid it's be unbelievable. <laughs> um, huge amounts of fossil fuel are being burned to uh, move plants from the canals onto the banks to go back in the canals and um, absolutely not get anything done at all except to use up some time and work. I would like very, very much, uh, with permission, to start collecting water plants in the canals of Holland to make um, uh, fuel. Uh, I say that because I'm working with a fermentation scientist in um, New Zealand and also with scientists in Germany for the Ruhr Capital Culture thing, uh, at least that's where we are standing, on uh, doing just that in the Ruhr Valley. And it would be nice to do this here in Holland because I think that you could get much more done. The general title that was <laughs> joked about for the show was Shell to Shell or Not to Shell. That is the question. And uh, what is happening, I think you should know this, um, is that Shell might actually <coughs> not be. Uh, I'm in New Zealand because there is a very uh, real political um, situation in which the person I'm with is meeting with the Deputy Prime Minister, the Minister for the Environment, the head of the Maori Party, the Minister for uh, social issues and so on, uh, Minister for Conservation, about mm -hmm. local energy production, local resource management in the thing I always talk about, watersheds, in this case in New Zealand, and local production of biogas along with fossil production that is there so that they don't need Shell or BP or Exxon or Mobil or Texaco or Cal Chevron or anybody to import anything. And that is happening now. Um, and I'm pretty much under house arrest there in that I have to go back and not give talks, not do shows, but work very, very hard on making New Zealand not have show. <coughs> now, how that's done will be a little bit indicated in the PowerPoint. And this, you know, I don't really like PowerPoints, but I think that we, uh, we can have a little bit of a review of what we're trying to do. Uh, that is some kind of art. It is, I think, the basic point about art, which is to help us uh, define our targets, what we have to get, in this case, animals. And uh, the main objective of art is to make sure we have animals. It's about animal magic, animal power, uh, animals in our world, not just keep sheep and cattle, but wild animals diversity of animals, birds, and so on. That's the ultimate purpose of art, is to have us live in the nature. And that means many other animals. And there are books about the need for you know, a whole diversity of animals, biodiversity, you know. There will be a big conference in Copenhagen uh, about climate change. I say, forget climate change. Concentrate on the technology you need to get the animals. And uh, the, the target would be the world. How do you organize the world? Well, you organize the world around Antarctica and then have the surrounding paradigms of the Pacific, the Atlantic, the Indian Ocean, and then something in Central Asia. That is the animal that we live off of. That's how we have to really organize our affairs because we live in a so-called global economy what needs to be a global ecology. Now, New Zealand is near the center. That's why I'm right there. 
and the reason being because we have global warming. Now, that's not just global warming as we know it, but also global warming as produced by oil companies. Shell, Exxon, BP, and so on. Um, it's not that I'm just saying global warming, is I'm saying those companies make the product we can't afford to have, as is indicated, I'm sorry it's a bit dark there, but uh, this kind of, this, I actually can't see it at all. But, uh, <laughs> let's say a comparison shot showing the warming of the ocean, but it's not visible with the present uh, uh, power fill or screen projection. Anyway, now, looking at the world, uh, what is important here is to, right now in New Zealand, we're looking at the ocean currents here, which are the main impact in the Amazon. Here, it's the main impact in the Congo. Well, the Amazon is the biggest river in the world. Congo is the second biggest river in the world. And then the ocean currents into here for the big impact on Indonesia, which then the impact on Yangtze and other big rivers in the world. The point is that this is your, down here, is your main source of activity on the planet. And then it goes to the north one comes back. But that is, I think, indicated by defining the the animal, which is that. That is the target we need to identify and take care of. Now, and we can do this kind of monitoring the whole situation with uh, oceanographic data, and that will be appearing in, uh, in New Zealand uh, starting, say, October 16, and then in Bristol, the United Kingdom, starting uh, in November 19th, as part of the response to Copenhagen and so on, say global monitoring, send it on Africa, look at it in the several oceans, and begin to handle it in synchronicity and see what's going on and how you can maybe begin to uh, handle that. And that is all uh, based on an art paradigm, which is, and which is, uh, I'm not going to get to that here, that. Uh, this is said by um, art historians to be the most influential art piece of the 20th century. And I know that uh, collectors think it's kind of funny, but it's not funny. It's actually a very important icon. And uh, it is the urinal by Marcel Duchamp. And I'm saying, well, if, if that is the most influential art piece, we need to organize around it. And so we need to have the urinal, or in this case, part of Iceland, or as you see in the installation I have, basins, saltwater basins, kind of cavities, be the new units or the, the units of planning. And you're just having urinals everywhere. Now, uh, I talked about satellite imaging. Here we are in uh, Holland. And there, between England and Holland, there's quite a lot of uh, bioproductivity down here, too. And so that's why I'm interested in trying to deal with the nutrients and the uh, life activity it comes down the Rhine to the, your waters uh, to begin to see what we can do. Uh, right now, a colleague of mine is working uh, on this coast around here uh, with uh, uh, seed plants as well. And I'll show that uh, coming up. Now, what's that have to do with art? It doesn't. Uh, what I'm talking about is architecture. Liam Battista Alberti, and before that Vitruvius, wrote theories about architecture saying it's really about the air of a city, the water of a city, the circulatory space, and finally the defense. And I think that the work of satellites is defense, and the work with uh, what I'm showing about, um, uh, say, water plants and so on, is really about air, air quality, because it's zero emissions fuel. And a paradigm comes from a piece here done for the Ocean Project of the Museum of Modern Art in 1968, which was to produce a flame from rotting vegetation in the water done by, in this case, Dennis Oppenheim. You know about that paradigm, of course, that's Robert Smithson. Well, what's it mean? Well, it means, among other things, bioproductivity in the water, in the salt water, and what you can do with it. So with all these things, these thoughts, I'm then referring to another artist, Joseph Boyce, and his idea of Fat Corner. And Fat Corner, which is a paraffin, and it's identified as such, has a chemical formula. And it really comes from a rec recognition that you have four molecules of carbon, four molecules of water, and from that, you can get this relationship of methane, uh, O2, CO2, and again, methane. And that is a, if you will, procedure that's done in a four factorial system that leads to that, which is a pentane, that's fat corner, and then you lead to the general circulation between uh, carbon dioxide, 
oxygen and